Ryan. 97 Rock Buffalo. 97 luck. The, the interesting thing is the station has Alice Cooper has a syndicated show, um, Lil Stevie has a syndicated show, and hopefully in the near future Butch Patrick will have a syndicated show all stemming from Buffalo's 97 Rock. Norton, I can hear you. I'm just doing fabulous. How's everything in Buffalo? Well, you know, a lot of things have been coming at me. It's been fun. This uh, social networking thing really has uh, some teeth to it this week. But unfortunately, what there's a, I'm going to lead off with some sad news. You know, Dick Clark, as we all know, passed away. And really funny, when I was in my heyday back in 1972, I actually was privileged enough to be on American Bandstand. I um, well, I had a Metro Media recording contract back then. They had let Bobby Sherman go, and they were looking for a new teeny bop star to pursue the David Cassidy, Michael Jackson, Osmond situation. And they decided after seeing Lidsville, they, uh, these two producers who handled Sugarloaf, an old rock and roll band from the, from the 70s, Green Eye Lady, Don't Call Us, We'll Call You, and um, they were my studio band, and we produced a record that was actually written by the Bee Gees called I.O. I.O. from Cucumber Castle. And they got me on the, uh, the American Bandstand to show you how good these guys were. I was actually the headliner over Loggins and Messina. <laughs> I mean, the, the, magic, the magic of the power of the pen, I suppose. But what happened was I, I woke up that morning. I, was I felt terrible. I had the flu. They gave me a shot. I went up there, and Dick knew I wasn't feeling well. And he came in, and he goes, he goes man, you're a real trooper, and the, the crowd's going to love you. And don't be worried, and you know, just get out there and give it your best. And... I'm in these, uh, these, you know, these polyester pants and this wild shirt from the 70s. My hair is down to my waist practically. But it was really one of the highlights of my career because Dick Clark was just an extraordinarily nice guy. It made a very difficult day very memorable for me. And I, I, you know, there's so many people that he, you know, that he influenced and touched that I'm just proud to be part of that stable. Yeah, we, we actually judged the dance contest at Loggins and Messina. I got the two-minute interview at Loggins and Messina. got the 30-second interview. But anyway, that, the passing of Dick Clark was very sad. And anyway, well, listen, Barry Livingston, and you may not know that name, but you know, er, you know, you know Ernie Douglas. He contacted me, and he's an old, old friend, because in the 60s and the 70s, I did 17 episodes as Ernie's best friend of My Three Sons. And next month, they're having in Los Angeles a My Three Sons Day, so I was contacted by Ernie. He said, you know, you're part of the tribe. Please come up and join us. And um, what I want to let you guys know, it, My Three Sons had a very interesting dynamic about it, because Fred McMurray at that time was the most powerful man in Hollywood and a lot of people thought it was Bob Hope or you know Bing Crosby or somebody like Johnny Carson but actually it was Fred McMurray and here's why he basically agreed to do that series on one condition that he would come in for like about a six week stint or maybe a month stint and do all his scenes for all 39 episodes first and they, and they would shoot around him and he would work really really hard for like a month and a half and then when you would come in if you were in the scene originally shot with Fred there would be a ladder with his face, you know, like a cutout of him standing over there. And you would do the whole scene around him. And so he would come in and he had enough power and clout to demand that and he got it. And Freddie de Cordova, who produced, uh, who directed all the Tonight shows, was the director. And it was work, great working with Fred. Don Grady was actually Robbie, my agent's mother, Mary Grady. And I think that's probably how I wound up doing so many of my three sons because I actually played three different characters across a few years. Yeah, they have a good, good ending. You know, it's interesting, too, because on that show, Leif Garrett's little sister, uh, Don, uh, Don Lynn, played Doty, so he was on the set a lot. And Don Grady was a musician. He married one of the King sisters. So there's a lot of musical activity going on in the show. 
you know, other than just people coming through and, and two and two Uncle Charlies, you know. All oh, that that sounds. Oh, what a ladder it was. Uh, later this weekend, I'm heading to Chiller Theater on the East Coast there in New Jersey, the granddaddy of all the conventions that feature monsters and rock and roll stars. I'm really excited because I'm going to be meeting a couple people that I've been following their careers forever. John Aston, the original Gomez Adams, and uh, who I always, I always loved Night Court when he played Buddy. You know, the real simple guy that would come in and, and uh, Harry Anderson. He was a great character. I love, I love his character Buddy, but people remember him as Gomez Adams. And I'm going to meet him for the first time. But I'm really excited most, to be honest with you, is Alice Cooper is going to be there. I've been following Alice Cooper since 1971 when I first saw him hang himself at the Hollywood Palladium and, and come out with a big python snake. And I thought, this guy is just too good to be true. And I've been following his career ever since. And I understand he's got a syndicated show as well. That's what I was told. I go, wow, wouldn't, it, wouldn't this be great when this thing takes off? I'll be in really good company with little Stevie, Alice Cooper, and myself. Vince is a little guy, huh? <laughs> well, you know, maybe that's that's maybe that's why he's endured so well because he's in good shape. Look, look at the Mick Jagger, how little he is. That's why I've been told. I know he I know he loves to go out. You know, the funny thing is, a couple years ago he was in Chicago. He was hosting a Munsters Marathon, and I tried my damnedest to get back there because I really thought it'd be funny to host a show with him. What a great way to meet him under the situation of Halloween and the Munsters Marathon. But maybe, uh, maybe this year, who knows? Another, another interesting thing in Chiller, a friend of mine, Tattoo Tony, has got under my skin a pilot being shot for the tattoo shows. I don't know if you ever noticed these tattoo shows, but a lot of people have Munster tattoos on various parts of their body. It's unbelievable how many I run across. And he's trying to get me to go in and get a tattoo for the show, and he actually does all of Brett Michaels' tattooing as well. Uh, so I'm thinking about getting one done. I don't know how many, 13, 13... Well, I'm thinking you know, possibly um, the comedy and tragedy, you know, the, the acting faces, because that's just a, a significant to my career. Uh, maybe Leo, because I'm, you know, the uh, Zodiac sign Leo. Maybe my sobriety date. Maybe a heart that says mom, you know, go old traditional. I don't know. I may, I may just run away, too, because I'm scared of needles. You know, in my, uh, in my disease, I never did a needle in my life, and I don't think I'm going to start now. <laughs> a Grandpa Munsters or something like that. Yeah, we love Al. We miss you. Well, anyway, that's about it for this week. It's, it's been a good one. Uh, oh, another thing passing, the band, uh, Levon Helm left. And I just, I can't say enough how much I enjoyed the band's music. I think they were, like, really underrated. And I've spoken to several people that knew him personally. And I guess this guy was really one of the true gentlemen of rock and roll. And uh, he will be missed. Thank you. Have a great one, guys. Bye-bye.